Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to a little bonus live composing stream we're doing today. Normally I do these on Tuesdays, but I had a little bit of extra time today that I wanted to dedicate to working on another Monster Sanctuary track. So if you've been following along with the production of this soundtrack, as many of you have been, well, then you know that sometimes, as a video game composer, sometimes you pitch an idea and the game developers love it and they put it in the game. And other times you pitch an idea and they don't like it and they just flat out reject it and you got to move on with your life. So that's what happened with this track. So this is kind of a, a, a win and a lose in Monster Sanctuary Land this week. Um, we, uh, me, uh, Peter and I, the co-composer, the additional composer uh, for this soundtrack, uh, we finally finished the boss, the final boss battle track. You guys got to hear the live stream back on Tuesday. Uh, we spent a little bit more time on it and finished it up, pitched it to the devs. They freaking loved it and said, this is actually the best word ever. This was the reply. Perfect. That was it. One word. Perfect. <laughs> that's like the ultimate compliment as a composer. That's just what you want right there. So. I'm on an emotional high right now because I got the, the word, the P word. But unfortunately, almost immediately after that, it was, by the way, the abandoned tower track you wrote sucked. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. So um, this is due by tomorrow to stick with our, our deadline. Um, and so I'm going to be working today and tomorrow to get this, this sucker done. Uh, maybe we'll get it done today. Doubtful, though. Um, but the way that this process has worked is I've gone back and forth with Peter, and hopefully he'll be joining us in the chat uh, today. Who knows? He's a busy guy too. Uh, but what I'm doing today is, man, uh, he came up with the idea this time. Sometimes I write the ideas, and then he fleshes it out, and we kind of go back and forth. Other times, like this one, he, he came up with the core idea, the uh, little snippet of the melody, a little bit of the theme. I'm going to show you exactly what he came up with, and then today we're going to produce it out. We're going to kind of flesh it out and hopefully make it work better for the environment that the game developers intended. But a quick little side note. My brain is all kinds of frazzled today, which is fine. Um, I'm actually really, really excited to write music because I haven't touched a keyboard all day, and this is the afternoon in my time. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and so usually by this point, I've already written all my music for the day before lunch, and then I do admin type stuff. But today was backwards. Um, today I made a heavy investment in some new gear. Um, now that I'm doing YouTube what feels like full-time, and it perhaps may continue to be a full-time job for me, um, it's, it's paying the bills, and it's obviously helping a lot of you guys, and this is tremendous fun for me because I get to work on real projects, but also show you the process. And then of course, um, do this, um, you know, make tutorial videos and all this kind of stuff. So it's just a ton of fun. I know that you guys enjoy these. So I'm gonna continue doing this, but just a little fun thing to look out for. Just made a huge purchase amongst multiple sites. So we're gonna see over the next couple of weeks, you'll see some new gear kind of trickle in here. But the, the most notable is I got some new headphones coming. I got a brand new mic coming. Uh, a new stand for that, new lighting, a uh, brand new 4K camera, um, all kinds of stuff. So I really, I've been doing some research and trying to compile what would make for an amazing stream. I think we have some pretty good streams here. Um, the quality is okay, it's not the best, uh, but even something that I just invested in, I had this light, check this out. You can't really see it from the camera you're watching right now, but um, I am gonna turn it off. I want you to see, you maybe notice that the lighting has been slightly different in my room. Check it out. Look how different this is gonna look. Whoa, ah. So this is the lighting, just natural lighting from a window beside me that I've been using for like a year. And then all of a sudden I said, you know what? I know how light, how important lighting is. So what if I start putting this little desk light? And then as soon as I turn it on, check it out. Boom. I know these Logitech uh, webcams are not the best, but you know, 1080p, that's not bad, not bad. Looks good for me. Uh, but anyway, uh, I digress. So <laughs> my goal is, oh my gosh, <laughs> you guys in the chat are so funny. Night Nightbot is in a mood today. It's like spamming people. <laughs> What's up, Marcelo? Uh, and, and Tide and a bunch of other guys here. But anyway, so for the next hour, uh, I want to write this track. Let's, I'm in a very mellow mood today because... 
you know, just spend a lot of money. And so maybe I'm like having buyer's remorse. I always do that. Um, no, but I'm really excited about uh, improving the stream quality. Cause to be honest, I never set out to be a YouTuber, never set out to make videos, but it just kind of naturally happened over time. So, you know, what you see right now is very much just what I had laying around. I had this, this, this Rode NT1A mic. I had these Auto Te Audio Technica headphones had my Focusrite Scarlett uh, 18i20. So they're music making tools that I've now been using for live streaming. But yeah, ultimately I just feel like that's not uh, something that, yeah, it's just something that I'll be investing in. Uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, let's get to it, shall we? Uh, so cool, let's jump into the music here. Today we're going to be working on a new track for the Abandoned Tower. So this is what Peter sent me. This is what we're going to be producing today. So let's just listen to this little 30 second or so clip. Okay, cool. So I think there's a lot of material in here and we can easily make a track out of this. So the notes that I gave Peter was to try and write something in a similar style. So that would be time signature and tempo um, and harmony, harmonic language that fits within the vibe that we did for the Keeper's Tower, which is a track we did earlier um, this year. So I think he did an amazing job capturing that vibe and if I recall, he was the one who also uh, created a little sketch for that track as well, that, which we then produced and turned into what is now the full track, which I don't believe is in the game yet. But I'm hoping that with this next Underworld update that the devs are about to put out uh, within the next few days, actually, maybe within a week, um, I'm hoping that some of these other tracks that we've been writing for the last several months actually make it in there. Um, they will all be in there eventually, but you know, you got to make sure the right characters are in the game and all that kind of stuff. Um, but until then, uh, yeah, I think he did an amazing job capturing, as Titan says, um, that old school Squaresoft feel. Uh, he and I are both deeply inspired by uh, Mitsuda um, or even, uh, you know, Secret of Mana soundtrack, Hiroki Kakuka, Kakuta, um, that kind of uh, ninth harmony jazz mixed with orchestral so definitely we're like old square soft is our bread and butter so yeah so i don't think you know a quick disclaimer he did not mean to for this to be produced in any way it's not produced but he was just slapping some notes on so we could have a conversation and i don't think he gave me permission to share this but i'm just going to share it anyway that like what this little tidbit that we have he, he can make good polished music but this is just a sketch. So right at the top, the first thing that I hear is, you know, he was just doubling some sounds. I like this choir pad. That's a terrific motive. I love it goes to the major. Beautiful. Good job, Peter. So now we have to figure out how to voice that. So I'm thinking of uh, shift shifting some of these around. Thanks for all the subscribers. 
I get those. I think you get those notifications too, but a lot of people subscribe and join the stream. I appreciate it. loves to modulate which is good because that's something I don't usually do but has helped shape this soundtrack quite a bit I'm actually my number one skill is writing melodies it always has been and so when someone hands me a collection of eight chords even if it modulates whatever that's my skill is I can write a cool melody on top of it same thing when I'm working with songwriters a lot of times people will hand me lyrics and I can write a really cool melody that fits it and so I'm very much a collaborative composer and I enjoy that most I'm actually not a great, at least I don't consider myself a great composer when all I have is like me in a vacuum, you know, me writing music. I have to be inspired by something. Uh, you could call me a better music editor than composer, but that's just me. Let's just do choir. It's very pretty. I'm gonna turn up the volume of the choir. might just be a good thing to double with the piano. Uh, I, I have to experiment. I want something short in the background and I might not do the bass just yet. Again, great core material that we're more or less arranging or orchestrating right now. Yeah, let's keep that F sharp going. Kind of like that. Gives it a bit of a spooky vibe without being overly so. And something's going on with my patch here. Sounds like the attack is messed up. So let's go into contact, going to my ASDR. I know exactly why I did that. Because I need to save my patch. Because I loaded uh, Peter's patch. So Peter, if you're listening, lob off like nine milliseconds of your attack of your string pits. You can see the whole folder right here. This is all the stuff that we've made. Save it if you ever want to change it. No, like we have our own uh, back and forth contact sample library that we built for this. Isn't that cool? First time I've ever done that with someone else. There it is. Now it doesn't have that that click. I like that. I think I just want to do quarter notes there because it's in three, four time. So let's get everything in. They're all eighth notes up to this point, and then I want to do um, just straight quarters on the beat. modulate to whatever that key you just did. Um, boom, 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 boom. I like that. All I gotta do is copy and paste that because it's already on the grid and just shift it up. I think a half step is what he modulated, if I'm not mistaken. I can go into the MIDI data, select it all, go up. There it is. And hey, a quick question um, from KBS Music. Did I finish the Westworld score? I did. Go check it out. It's right here on my YouTube channel. Go back like three videos, four videos. Just go to my, you know, my main page, youtube.com slash C slash Stephen Mullen. You can check it out. Uh, that's my final score. And it's been viewed quite, quite a lot, which is pretty cool. Several thousand times, which is kind of a weird thing for people to watch. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> and I, oh man, I have to just go on a quick little diatribe here. Um, a lot of people, it, it's just funny. There's a, there's a polar opposite um, feel for my track. People either love it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so unique and interesting. And then the other half are like, oh, this is so boring. Why did you use a string quartet instead of big brass strings and percussion? I'm like, people, people. Now I have to, I have to like step back and think. Okay, who are these people replying? I mean, they're probably film students. They're probably composers who've been composing for a few years. But at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta think from the perspective of the producers and the director. That's who's judging this and Spitfire, I suppose. Um, but it's just funny. People are trying to like throw these jabs at me, but I I'm not phased by it. I've worked with film directors and especially in TV world, they don't if ah. I could just go at like an hour rant. I might someday, but here, here it is in a nutshell. It, if you're going to sound like Hans Zimmer, or if you want to sound like whoever, pick your favorite composer, James Newton Howard. If you want to sound like, or in this case, Ramin Djawadi, right? He's the composer for Westworld. If you want to sound like him and you write like him, you will never be him. And so you will always be a sound alike. You would never have your own voice if you're trying to sound like everybody else. And these producers and directors know that the purpose of these contests is for people to be experimental. Those are the people who win contests. You don't win a contest by sounding the most like Ramin Jawadi. He's not just going to turn around and say, hey, you want my job? <laughs> you know, um, it's just not going to happen. J.J. Abrams is not just going to all of a sudden come out of the woodworks and say, hey, Steven, you sound just like Ramin. I want to hire you on my next. That doesn't happen. No, they got the budget. They can hire him all day long. So instead, I'd rather sound like me and be interesting and do my crazy electronic string quartet. Okay, so just get off my back. Just kidding, you're not my back, but I like healthy debate and conversation. But sometimes people just say stupid stuff. Cool, then Peter. I uh, went back down to the F-sharp minor. By the way, these are not quantized. That's why it sounds a little bit off. My pits are. We see that. I mean, he literally probably just played this like five minutes ago on his keyboard. Boom, 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 boom. Check it down. Let's see. We're in three, four, so 16th notes. Yeah. Now everything should be quantized and pretty. That's better. Oh, I didn't see Demo's question in the chat. Thanks for asking. He says, uh, do you often like to make your own contact libraries and samples? I do. Uh, I don't do it all the time. I'm doing it more often these days than not for the exact same rant that I just gave, which is if you want to sound like yourself, Make your own sounds. There's no better way to sound unique than to literally create sounds from scratch. This soundtrack is a, is a perfect example of that. Monster Sanctuary consists of 100% custom samples that me and Peter created for this game only. You will never hear these sounds again unless I somehow give them out to somebody. Um, they're custom patches. I created these. He, he created some. And we, we've gone back and forth and made it a cool palette. And then we wrote the soundtrack. That's a unique way. And that's exactly why Super Nintendo soundtracks and Sega Genesis soundtracks, which are some of my favorite, obviously the 16-bit era back in the 90s, um, those were 100%, most of them were 100% custom samples. Composers went to their keyboards and they played some sounds, they manipulated them, they made their sound sets, and then they wrote their music using numbers and codes versus you know MIDI, um, sometimes MIDI with like N64, I think. But anyway, um, they made their own sounds, and that's that's one of the things that's being lost in modern music is people are all using sample libraries instead of creating their own stuff. So I like to bridge the two worlds together, do my own stuff mixed with. Um, and for those who watched my... Man, I'm just... Apparently, I just wanted to talk to you guys today. Forget music. Um, apparently, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. the Westworld score that I did, if you watched that, then you know that I used my own screwdrivers... <laughs> for percussion instead of grabbing some Hans Zimmer percussion library, which costs $500, right? 
and to get the big Hollywood drums, I literally took a pair of screwdrivers. They're actually behind me in my little tool desk back here. I took screwdrivers and did that. Sampled them in contact and then played it on my keyboard. You guys saw me do it. Go back and watch the live stream. Um, yeah. And it sounds fantastic. And it's just like, it's so unique and different and whatever. Yeah. So do that. So let's check out our time code because that's an important part here. So we want this whole thing to be a two minute track. Uh, that's all the information Peter gave me and I'll run from here. Look down here at the time code. It is when it starts uh, 720, golly, one hour, seven minutes and 25 seconds. That's a lot of music, 725. So we want it to be 925 when it's done, two minute loop. So I'm just moving my cursor. So it says that 925, there it is. I'm going to make a marker right there that says two minute loop. I like everything about this that he has so far. I like the tempo. I like the instrumentation. Now I just have to extend it out. So all I'm doing is taking my looper bar, moving it until it is on the beat. And then I'm going to make some quick section markers. So this beginning is very obviously a an intro of sorts which I like that a lot. That'll loop well. Cool. And that's an A section. So I'll put A and then a B section will start here since we've already established 16 bars, I believe 16. Yeah, that's six. Well, I can't count one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. 16. Um, this would be a B section just for counting sake. Let's do 16 as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then here we'll do a C section. I don't want to repeat anything just yet with a two minute track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So right about there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I probably will make something longer. So we might have to bridge the gap here. It's just part of this, you know, but it's not a lot of bars. It's like eight bars. So somewhere in here, I might double a B or do the A twice, something. Um, but typically I don't do more than three sections. So let's just leave that alone. It'll come to me when, when the time is right. Uh, quick thought <clears throat> from Bambi Simba in the chat. The thing I find challenging is when I'm chipping away at something and my idea reminds me of something else I've heard, then I can't get that out of my head. Oh my gosh, that's my entire life. My entire life. Mm, here's what I've learned. I, heard, I learned this from my, um, who taught me this? My middle school piano teacher. So this is like decades ago. Good Lord. Am I that old? Ugh. Um, this has to do with, this has, this is what she taught me with piano practice. I'm a composer. So like even in middle school, I was writing music instead of practicing piano. I would sit down and start like playing final fantasy and Mario and Donkey Kong or whatever. I would like, Oh, that, that Bach melody reminds me of, and then I just go off and instead of, um, reprimanding me for that, she taught me to get it out of my system. So she said, set a timer for yourself. Give yourself like five minutes, play all those tunes that you want to play and then come back and go back to practicing. So I think within composition, we can do the same thing. You notice on these streams, I just kinda, you know, go on tangents. I think it's okay. Like if you're in the zone and you're writing, write. But if you wanna take a pause and answer a question, do that. But as far as writing goes, if you have if you have a fun melody that gets stuck in your head that you're reminded of from something, then yeah, just like figure it out and play it. Cause I think it's, that's, a, that's a skill that you need to, um, nourish and develop it's not something you should ignore so if something reminds me of um whatever Final Fantasy 7 it's on my mind right now I 
right? If I'm writing something, I'm like, oh my gosh, that reminds me of that. To take the time. Wrong notes and all. Allow yourself to have that moment of release. That way you can, like a minute later, you can move on to your piece of music. And I don't think it's going to influence you negatively. I think it's actually going to help because it's going to allow you to get it out of your brain and make sure that you don't do it. Like you can, once you know what not to do, you can do anything else, right? That's nice, the way I think. And yes, Bambi, you should do something cool with your cello. And you're not gonna do the Joker pastiche. You're fine, you're fine. All right, let's get, let's stop talking about structure. Let's actually write music. So he provided this bass line. Let's see what that's doing. Let me unmute it. I like his bass better than my pizzicato anyway. He's a great bass player and like writer. And I trust that. So I'm going to leave that alone. He likes to do like these high bass lines, which I never think of, which I love. I don't like this part. Boom, 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 boom. So let's get the bass out. the pitch bend. By the way, this is something that um, Square, since we're talking about them, Squaresoft used to use this in every one of their games, Super Nintendo and PlayStation. Once you know this trick, you'll listen, you'll hear it everywhere. When, uh, instead of uh, adding a new sample, for example, right, which is what the MIDI says, notice I to get to the G sharp, I just use my pitch bend that is the coolest way to make samples sound more legato so i'm going to scoop into it then scoop up back down that's what a bassist would do right they, they just slide the finger up and then go down Play it in. Boom, 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 boom. Oops, I have to play it correctly, don't I? That's what I want to do. That way the pulse of the string pits can help drive it. I'll probably add some snare drum there. Some ensemble snares. Like that. To give some more rhythmic interest. Yeah, that's really solid. It's a good change of pace. Because the bass is a little bit more mellow and legato. And then the string pits is boom. So before I get too carried away, let's do what I said I was going to do with the snare drum. I have an orchestral percussion section. It's actually from, this is straight up ripped off. I just took these from uh, Palette. I took the um, percussion section. That's it. I just turned them into contact instruments. That way that everything's uniform. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I have to figure out what the heck notes I have here. The reason that I don't just use the palette library, the reason I throw it into contact and chop up all the samples and make them like this is because now all the velocities are the same. And that's one of the characteristics of 16-bit music is regardless of how loud I play it, it's gonna be the same. However, contact creates its own velocities based on how hard you push it. So it it's like resampling. It degrades the quality, but it's an intentional quality that I'm trying to achieve. 
I don't want a pure, beautiful snare drum. I want a a resampled and compressed sounding snare drum. It's just part of the style. Decision though is do I do it at the beginning or the A section or both? I'm thinking just the A section and to turn it down a little bit. By the way, something I'm trying to improve on, let me know if you think I'm doing it well or if you have any suggestions of how to improve, but with my camera angles. So whenever I try playing stuff in, I'm trying to be better about shifting between my cameras like this. And with the 4K camera, oh, my heart is just gonna be so happy. New microphone, new headphones. New lighting rig, oof. It's gonna get all kinds of purdy up in her. And no more plosives, no more plosives. Sorry for my headphone wearing crowd. <laughs> you know, there's nothing more, there's like nothing more annoying to me than when I accidentally slip a P and you hear my P. And the thing is, I have a pop, I have a pop filter. <laughs> like seven, seven of you just unsubscribed. Um, uh, I have a pop filter, but it's just like, it doesn't work because look at this stupid angle. Microphones are not supposed to do this, by the way. This is a cardioid condenser mic. It's not made for what we're doing right now. This is made for like recording a violin, recording a guitar, right? It's not made, sorry, my eye is like super itchy today. Um, it's not made for VO, a dynamic microphone is because it's a cylinder that faces your mouth and it's beautiful and it's going to sound glorious and you don't have to use all this contraption so i'm just excited allow my excitement to inspire you today anyway i just can't wait for that day yeah that's gonna be a lot of fun here we go So I want to vote in the chat. Do you think I should do eighth notes or 16th notes? Type it in now. Give me an eight or 16. So eighth note is on, whoopsies, whoops. <laughs> One, two, three, actually, yeah. So eighth notes, 16th is the da, 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 da. Again, eighth notes versus the more intense. Love your comments. That sounds the most natural to me, but I'd also just love to know what you guys think. Sounds like everyone wants 16th, so there we are. I did it. I read your minds. 20 seconds into the future, whoa. I feel like this gives enough propulsion to move us forward. There's nothing worse in video games, especially Metroidvanias. They get a bad rap for this. When you write music that's too chill and too ambient, and it makes you want to sit still. But really the purpose of the game is to kind of push you along, right? Go explore, little one. So by having something as simple as a snare drum, it kind of forces you to, to want to move on. You can do the same thing with ambient music, but you have to use like synths and things that help push it forward. All 
right, here we go. Sorting melody. It's time. This definitely needs some uh, bell, but we'll double that with maybe strings. We already have a, a seventh, so. So if I grab a piano here. Mm -hmm. All right, I see what you did there, Peter. Pull out the old Koji Kondo. See, see, see. In reference to my the question earlier, don't like I'm not gonna copy Koji Kondo. I'm not gonna rewrite the Dark World theme. That makes no sense. But I'm gonna use the minor one to major four idea. unique, right? Maybe. Kind of the direction I would go with this, because we have, we have these this half step relationship. So let me write down the chords that way. Not only can you follow along better, but I can open this up tomorrow and not be terribly confused about what we did. Taking notes like this is very very powerful. Um, so I need to move this into the right section. I have section markers and they're colored for a reason, so I don't get lost. Uh, but chords, it's pretty simple. It's a minor one to a major four. It's a very heroic sound. So we have F sharp minor to a B major, but I think it's like a, he's doing something else. Be like a five seven, but whatever. Seven, four seven. Ugh, I don't know what that's called. Uh, but let's continue in the same vein. So it's G minor to C major. Even if he didn't in intend for that to be the chord progression, that's what I hear. And that's what we're gonna do. Okay, let's just do that. And then we do the same thing twice. We copy, we paste, we passed it. Probably do that twice if we need to extend the track a little bit. So, as I was describing earlier, let's grab a melody.
yeah, not that. Maybe some whirly piano, some whirlisser. Peter is being more sophisticated than I'm giving him credit for. I think he's actually doing a, an A minor 7, A minor 9. Which is way fancier, and I like that a lot. Here's what I'm feeling. I feel like if we're doing this second section, I feel like G minor to A minor nine is a much more interesting chord. It may have been what he intended anyway. So G minor, A minor nine. I think I meant this one. And then C for the second one, the major four, right? So we can transpose that to do the same thing. We're doing F sharp minor. Do the same thing. So instead of a B, which is the uh, four sharp relationship, um, we're going to change it to something else. Um, let's take a second and listen. Yeah, so I'm feeling like, let's do, if I can get the right spelling of the chord here. So this is F sharp minor. What I want to do is a minor two, minor two nine. Why? Because Peter, that's why. Uh, G sharp minor nine. That, it's not that complicated of a chord. <clears throat> Excuse me, so F sharp minor to G sharp minor nine, which is the same thing as saying a B over a G sharp, by the way. Nine chords are not that complicated. It's a it's a major chord over a minor chord. Ooh, that's even nicer. that better but let's find out that a lot. So let's put it in. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's copy and paste the chords and we'll just make the second half more interesting. I'll call that a two section. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. 
If it doesn't make sense, ask questions. That's why I like to do live streams instead of just post videos of me chatting at myself. diminished. Trusty xylophone synth, which is fantastic for just filling up space. That's nice. Going to keep, I'm going to keep the same octave. I don't want that to get too high, otherwise it clashes. Gotta be careful not to let your instruments clash. Maybe something interesting, different color.
delete up by half step here. what I want to do with that. It's a different tonal direction. impressions. Hey, what's up, David? Ah, there's the nasty note. sure who's more shocked here, you or me.
kinds of directions here, and that's okay. working. Hmm. I like having that background strings. out the strings there so we can change some the tonal palette back in here. choir we've made. It's very Metroid. so good.
is. Let's double that with a bell. these chords. I can't do much without knowing what chords I'm playing. Uh. is a B major sharp seven or a B sorry B major seven uh, so chords for anyone who cares G minor D sharp minor bum 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 I'd say B major seven over the seventh which is the A sharp yeah so that's a B over F sharp. Here's the sounds. It's an F sharp suspended. We'll just call it F sharp. Keep it simple. Okay, and then repeat. Fun modulation as well. So this is a um, an F F seven F minor seven. It's a half step modulation down. one is C sharp major over E sharp holy nonsense is C sharp major over E sharp so you can even call this dang it it's a C sharp 2 gross over uh, I don't know, but it has this diminished quality. I'm going to call it F minor 2. Or E sharp minor. Is that a thing? Can that be a thing? Let me know in the chat if E sharp minor is a real chord. Could it be? 
could that you call this? I don't know. I think it gives us enough chords to work with. So this would be B2. this F with some dashes and then E with some dashes and then we'll put like a little F because it's so unclear <laughs> and then we'll call this the C section and that'll probably be all the time we have for today with that so let's fill it out let's make some music a symbol to connect. It's too low. Let's go in. Put it in place. Symbol. It takes too long. something here.
that's so kind of you, Robin Chat says. It's therapeutic watching you compose for some reason after blasting my ears with my own project for 20,000 hours. I totally understand that. I, I feel the same way when I watch other people compose or just artists do their art. There's something very relaxing about it because it's like you're watching someone else kind of get into their, their zen. some breath from this snare but I can't be completely absent of percussion otherwise it'll feel like it's lost lost little puppy perhaps the triangle shall make a triumphant return I haven't used triangle this entire soundtrack. <laughs> Maybe now. drum maybe it's not sound good at all to me There's the hi-hat I've used in so much of the soundtrack. I was looking for something to help fill that space. This is going to be the hi-hat for sure. If we can do both. for a C-section.
something like an outro of sorts. So let's take that. Take it, 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 take it. track that way I know to come back and play around with it I can see lots of potential there that mean good I have a feeling I'm gonna to need to take all the material from B onwards did a modulation, but I never came back. I don't think it works. So what I'm talking about is if I go to B, select all, let's kill anything that's not important. Right there, I think. 
Okay. And let's take. Yeah, so I want to take everything that is to the right of B. So the B and C sections if I just played. Let's put it all in F sharp minor instead. I think that's everything I selected. Yep. And let's put it up uh, down two half steps. Let's see how that feels. We finally get to a loop point. I'll make sure that last note is not an eighth note. Just hold it out. idea what to put there yet. But I'm going to toss this to Peter and see what he thinks. See if we can make some sense out of these new stuff. I think that's going to be a good spot. And then we'll extend to the end and turn it into a two minute loop. But we have till tomorrow to figure this out. So I'm taking a pause for today. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the stream as always. It's always fun to get to write music with other people in the room. It's very inspiring and it forces me to do my best. I get crap done. People are watching. That's just true. I don't I, I don't get distracted by Facebook and Instagram and whatever. Researching and emails. I don't I don't get distracted by all that. 
when I'm live streaming. And so it's, it's a very powerful thing in my life and it pushes me to get stuff done. And it gives you guys a database, an archive of what it looks like to work hard every day. And my process, it's not perfect. It's sloppy. I make a lot of mistakes. I get rejected too. Um, I need help lots of times. I ask for lots of feedback and I just think it, it makes for a better lifestyle. So thanks guys for being a part. I hope this is fun for you. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit a like, hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm share with other peoples. And if you've not hit the little notification bell, ding, 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 please do that. Something I wanna work on um, as I'm acquiring more gear and getting better at these streams is I, I want to not only look better and you know have a cleaner audio and signal, all that kind of stuff, but I also wanna just get better with the production value of making this more engaging because I know it can be so boring sometimes um, watching a live stream where I'm nitpicking every little detail, but um, I have some thoughts. And I'm going to start experimenting a bit more, so I hope you enjoy that and please leave your feedback because it helps me making helps me make better music and a better experience for you guys. So hope you enjoy this. Uh, listen to the work in progress of Abandoned Tower version two or version B since version one was totally rejected uh, we're going to try this new version and see if the devs like this direction so anyway have a fantastic rest of the day and i will see everyone tomorrow i'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow where i don't know what i'm doing yet tomorrow to be totally honest i'm just like this is what i get for doing streams in the afternoon instead of like lunchtime it's just nuts anyway let's play what we have i'll see it tomorrow sometime i'll let you know Follow me on socials. I'll let you know. Okay, bye.